another Taylor Swift album, another video. So, folklore. I think this is one of her most lyrical and aesthetically cohesive albums that she's ever come out with. And especially after watching Miss Americana and like bawling my eyes out because I've grown up following Taylor Swift's career. I was so ready for this album and boy, did it deliver. <laughs> so I've listened to the album a few times now, enough to get a feel for early favorites, but I also wanted to rank each song using data, using some YouTube metrics and also analyze some YouTube comments to see what people are saying about each song. So let's get into it. So this is what I did. For each song's lyric video, I got the ratio of likes to reactions, the ratio of likes to views, and the total number of views. Then I normalized these metrics and I added them up to form a final score for each song. And if you're curious why I use these metrics in particular, because it's kind of arbitrary, I explain it more in my lover ranking video. But now let's focus back on folklore and bring on the rankings. In 16th and last place, we have Cardigan. And I know it's crazy because this is the only song that she has a music video out for right now, but it might be because of that that it's ranked so low. So I actually ranked both the lyric video and the music video just to see how they would do. And the lyric video got last place, so actually 17th place. And then the music video got 16th place. And I can see why, because the lyric video had the least amount of views probably because there's a music video out for it. And the music video had the lowest ratios of likes to reactions and likes to views. And this might be because this is a trending worldwide music video. And so not everybody who watches it is going to be a big fan and click like on the video. So just trying to rationalize the low placement of Cardigan because I don't think this is a bad song at all. Um, it's not my favorite one, but I think it's a good song. Anyway, moving on to rank 15, that is Exile. This is actually one of my favorite songs off of the album so far. So kind of disappointed, but I wanted to see what people are saying. So basically what I did was I scraped all the YouTube comments off of each song. And for each song, I looked at the most commonly used words and the most commonly used sequences of two words and of three words. So for exile, some interesting words that were commonly repeated are the last time, which is actually another Taylor Swift song. Um, that's a duet with another male artist. So I can see how people are drawing parallels there. They're also saying, this is beautiful, love this song, safe and sound. That's one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time, safe and sound, which is like pretty much my favorite Taylor Swift song of all time. Anyway, moving on to rank number 14, Mirror Ball. If I look a little closer, it looks like it's not doing so hot on the views. Personally, don't love this song that much. So let's see if the comments have anything interesting to say. Oh, prom. I guess this, this song can evoke feelings of nostalgic dance floors. Okay, moving on to rank number 13, and that is The One. I really like the song. It's the first one on the album, obviously, because it has the number one in the name, and Taylor's clever like that. I love you and I love this are the top two three-word sequences um, being said in the comments, so clearly people really do like this song. I'm thinking this might be in a similar boat as Cardigan, where there's a lot of views because it's the first song on the album, and therefore the ratios are lower. Moving on to rank number 12, which is Betty. Let's see, let's see. Old Taylor. Country Taylor. Clearly people think that this reminds them of her old songs, her country songs. Oh, who is Betty? 20 people asked who is Betty. Okay, moving on to rank 11. And that is the last great American dynasty. I personally don't think I've gotten into the song enough. It might grow on me, we'll see. So some people are saying this reminds them of Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince, which is a song that I really do like. Rhode Island, Rhode Island house? Uh, let me look that up. Apparently this song is based off of the Rhode Island house that Taylor bought and its former occupants. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I guess that goes to show that like all of her songs on this album are so lyrically complex. There's definitely a story behind each one. Moving on to number, what are we on? 10, okay. And that is My Tears Ricochet. This is one of my favorite songs on the album. Sounds like I have a lot of favorites. 
I think it's just a great sad song and I love sad songs. So the sadder the better and with tears in its name can't go wrong. People are saying all too well. People are comparing it to all too well, which is like a golden standard of Taylor Swift songs to a lot of Swifties, if you didn't know. I guess people are really uh, liking it <laughs> and just are sad about it. It's a sad song. Good. <laughs> I've been sitting here for a while. I don't know how to speak anymore. Moving on to number nine, peace. And let's see about peace. Clowns to the... Is that a lyric? Okay, it is a lyric. There's robbers to the east, clowns to the west. So I guess people find a lot of meaning in that lyric. I'll have to look more into it. But in the meantime, on to number eight. Rank eight is the song seven. It's kind of like a haunting song. It's not one of my favorites yet. Um, let's see what people are saying about it. Safe and sound, okay. Maybe I'll just have to listen to this again and again until I like it. <laughs> Moving right along to rank seven, and that is This Is Me Trying. And this is another one of my favorite songs on this album. I'm sure you're done with hearing me say that, but I feel like there's a certain part of the song at around the two minute mark that is like super, like revelatory it's like this beautiful instrumental and i'm a sucker for beautiful instrumentals and it's just like so powerful and refreshing people are saying that it reminds them of back to december which is another one of my favorite songs and so that totally makes sense um that i would like the song as well moving on to number six hoax so Hoax is the last song on the album, or the main album at least. Kind of sad, pensive, peaceful vibes. So I think it wraps up the whole album pretty nicely if I'm like pretending to be a music critic here. Anyway, rank five, we have Illicit Affairs. I feel like this is one of the songs where I'm going to have to listen to it more times. And I see a lot of people are quoting the lyrics in the comments. So clearly this is a very lyrically charged song. Yeah, moving on to number four. We are closing in. Rank four is August. August is also the eighth song on the album. Um, clever. I also like the song a lot. I think it has a really nice melody and flows really well. And some people are also comparing it to Back to December in the comments. So clearly I'm just being predictable now. On to number three, we have Invisible String. This is another super folksy, woodsy song. And apparently she mentions Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner in this by saying, for the boys who broke my heart, now I send their babies presents. Very interesting. She has a lot of Easter eggs in these songs and I think I will need more time to go through them all. And that leaves us down to the final two. So at rank two, we have Epiphany. And this song kind of reminded me of like a church hymn a little, and it's very much representative of its title. It was very like ethereal, floaty, um, it's very beautiful. I can see why it's at rank two. And so if you can follow the process of elimination, we have in first place, Mad Woman. And I'm very happy about this one. Um, Mad Woman is a killer song. A lot of people are comparing the song to The Man, which I also love as a song, but I find it so cool that Taylor is able to bring similar tones and messages to songs of totally different genres. And the song has amazing lyrics. Every time you call me angry, I get more angry. What about that? Just like the sheer irreverence in her tone really makes for a hard hitting song. And some of these comments are saying, did she just? And that kind of summarizes the song for me. It's like, did she just? Yes, she did. And that concludes the rankings. Hope you found this kind of interesting. Again, the songs have only been out for a little bit at this point, so the rankings will change over time as likes and views shift. So if you want to do this ranking on your own because you're curious to see how this has changed, I've included my code down below. Basically, I was asking the YouTube data API for the statistics and the comments so that I don't have to like manually dig through things. Anyway, I am so happy that this album is out. I just love the aesthetics and the songwriting and 
you know I'm gonna be listening to this on repeat and picking and repicking my favorites and reading the lyrics and everything. And I'm just so impressed that Taylor's out here flexing her versatility. Not an expert, but I feel like this could win some Grammys or something. That's it for the video. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.